Hey guys, and welcome back to another Star Wars podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Melissa, and today Matt and I have another very special treat for you guys. Lucasfilm once again reached out to us last week and asked us if we would be interested in taking part in a one-on-one interview with David Shane, the writer, and Ken Cunningham, the director of Star Wars Lego Terrifying Tales. Um, We obviously said yes. (laughs) Uh, I love the Lego content personally. I don't know if Matt's seen any of it, but my first exposure to it was the Lego Droid Tales, I think it was called. I think those were like 2012 or 13. Um, And I just, I get such a huge kick out of them. I think they're hilarious. I love how they don't take themselves seriously and the characters are just basically massive caricatures of themselves. So I was really excited uh, when this opportunity came up. I asked David and Ken about like the beginning process of how these Lego shorts even come about when Lucasfilm first gives them the project. Uh, We talked a little bit about, you know, the voice direction, the inclusion of Christian Slater, uh, which I did not know he was Ren until the very, very end of the episode. So naturally, I just had to ask them how they got him to do it and what their favorite part of the process is. You know, I, I love talking to people and getting to know why they love doing what they they do. And it was really cool to hear about their favorite parts of the process. So I hope you guys enjoy this interview. It it was, unfortunately, a very short interview. Uh, We had to keep a tight schedule. And so I I got about 10 or 11 minutes with them. Um, But we had a great time, a lot of laughs. And I'm so grateful once again to Lucasfilm for this opportunity. It was so much fun. So I hope you guys enjoy this interview. Let me know what you thought of the Lego Terrifying Tales uh, special. I had a good time with it. I thought it was really funny. Um, But drop a comment if you are listening on YouTube or just shoot us a message. We want to hear your thoughts. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Another Star Wars Podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at star underscore wars underscore pod. Or if you just want to listen in the typical old fashioned podcast way, you can find us on Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Breaker, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I almost forgot, I think it's International Podcast Day. So happy International Podcast Day to our fellow podcasters out there. Thank you for listening to us. If you tune in each episode, we are so appreciative of you guys. And don't forget, the Force will be with you always. Hi, uh, Ken and David. My name is Melissa. I do a podcast called Another Star Wars Podcast with my brother, Matt, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. But I'm so excited to ask you guys some questions about Lego Terrifying Tales. So first of all, how how does this process start? Like when you guys begin a new Lego project, does and for example, for like the Star Wars for this one, does Disney come to you and are they like, we want a Halloween special, please include uh, the sequel trilogy characters, um, or is it kind of like sky's the limit? So could you talk about like the initial beginnings of the project or how that whole process starts? Sure. Yeah, it actually really, it really starts with Lucasfilm. Um, they had the original idea for doing the holiday special um, that Ken and I worked on together. And then um, when we were in the middle of doing the holiday, we were sort of, we had kind of rounded third base and done all the writing and on our end and Ken's team up in Vancouver was, was producing the holiday special. Um, myself talking to the folks at Lego, talking to folks at Lucasfilm were sort of, well, what other holidays could we do? And so Halloween was really a natural, um, it's a, you know, it's a TV staple. And uh, it just felt like sort of the next place to approach. So it starts with there. We start kicking around ideas. Um, it's a very collaborative process. It's really, I mean, it was during the pandemic. So it was a virtual room, but it was a bunch of us <laughs> sitting in the room and going, well, what, see and what makes sense for Halloween? And um, we knew we wanted to find a way to honor uh, all three eras. So we wanted the prequel era, the classic, and also the um, sequel trilogy. So we started going, well, we could do these sort of three ghost stories you know they're sort of simpson style treehouse of horror stories and then it was yeah and we realized well it'd be fun to do that in a haunted house oh we've got vader's castle let's set that there so all those pieces 
come into play. Um, and so that that's how it initially kicked off. Um, and then, you know, it was great to get to go back to work with Ken and, and the whole team at Atomic. Yeah. And the, the cool thing about it is I know I saw that you guys have done like several Lego projects before. So I've seen like, you know, like Jurassic World. I saw the the Ninjago stuff. I saw um, the Marvel stuff. So I I can tell like this is not like your first time like going in this. It's just like I don't know how the process starts. So that's that's actually really cool to know that you guys have that much creative freedom. Because my next question was going to be, you guys don't really seem restricted because you'll have things like in the holiday special, you'll have like Ray interacting with Obi-Wan and Anakin, and then you'll go to Grievous and, and Maul fighting each other. And so it's like, it doesn't really seem like you guys have a lot of, oh, like you have to stick to this timeline. It's, oh, like feel free to jump around. The follow-up question to that is, is there anything that you guys haven't done in these Star Wars Lego shorts that you would like to do? Is there is there something that you haven't done yet or like a, a timeline or like a specific themed special that you'd be like, oh, that'd be fun? Uh, I, I I really want to do an Arbor Day special. Lucasfilm keeps saying no. <laughs> uh, I just felt like the natural place to go after <laughs> Halloween. Um, it, you know, it's interesting you what you were saying about the timelines because what's, if you... I've, I've said this a bunch, but Lego Star Wars is really canon adjacent. And so we do try to honor, believe it or not, we actually do try to honor um, canon and timeline and then do a funny spin on it. So even in the holiday special, for example, when all those timelines got crossed, you know, we created this device, a key that sort of explained why it would happen. And then we would move people back out. Um, similarly in here, though, these stories, we do try to kind of the, the stories that Vinay is telling sort of are all staying within their periods and staying period specific. And then even this surrounding story, the, the sort of bridging story, um, the framing story around it was also stored, stored, sort of, excuse me, staying true to that as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, and Ken, I mean, as you've noted, Ken and I both worked on a bunch of Lego pro projects and Ken, I mean, like the thing I like I, is like, we do get a lot of room with all that said about timelines, we do get an enormous amount of room to play. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't I mean it it's really like it, it the priority is like the best idea. It's just that's that's the goal. Like what's the best thing we can make? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. One of the other things I noticed about this special is that you guys got Christian Slater to come on. <laughs> can can you please talk about that? Because I, I didn't even know that till the end. You know, I, I look through the credits. I see James Arnold Taylor. I see Sam White where I'm like, yeah, okay. I know who these guys are. And I'm like, wait a minute. What is Christian Slater doing on here? Like, can you describe, like, how did that even come about? <laughs> all, all hail Lindsay Halper and Lucasfilm casting. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're going to play, if you're going to get an 80s movie villain, don't you kind of have to get Christian Slater? I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> know. That's true. That's true. But, That's true. Uh, and I mean, Ken and I were talking earlier, like the record he was just so much fun yeah super nice like just the nicest guy and like you know it's not like he just kind of came in and dashed off the lines and took off like he really got invested <laughs> in it he played around with stuff yeah you know, like uh, we almost had to like you know no 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 it's good <laughs> you know? it's like no no, no i can do one more <laughs> You know, and I, I love that because you guys also, and I, I caught on to this, you you did the, you know, kind of like the 80s bikers thing with the very specific 80s music. When it came to like the voice direction and stuff, like maybe with Christian Slater specifically, like, do you have specifics on voice direction that you gave where you're like, just be ridiculous? Like, can you explain how you directed him? Because I'm curious how that differs, how that process differs for something like Lego. You know, I, it's, it's funny, Ken, I don't know how much it does differ. I mean, it really, it's sort of letting the actors and asking the actors to bring to bear what they're great at. Um, it's, it's an incredibly talented cast. Um, neither of us can take full credit for directing. Um, yeah, uh, Mary right. Elizabeth McGlynn is our main director and she's just, she is so good and just captures little subtleties and, you know, everybody we work with is really talented. And then Mary can always find that like extra 5% in their performance that just takes something that's good and takes it to great. Um, Ken, you've talked, I mean, you, you've talked several times about like the physicality of Tony Hale. Yeah, no, like, I mean, that, that can be a thing that really informs like, so with like for me, 
he really took a lot of cues from Tony's performance in the record. Like he was just extremely physical when he gave that performance, which was very different. Like, you know, the, I mean, the little you see of him, he's very, you know, he's a very static kind of a, right. a character. Whereas like Tony was just like doing all this stuff, just <laughs> moving around at it, you know? So we, we, like we record, or we video record all the records. So, you know, I got them to send that over and I showed it to the animators and, you know, as much as we could, we had the minifigs kind of replicate what he was doing. That's awesome. That's so awesome. I just, yeah, I don't know. It's really cool to hear about that process. The last thing I want to note, because I know we only have a few minutes left, but I did catch that awesome homage to The Shining which was the here's B1563. It made me laugh so hard and I just loved it. Do you guys, you know, obviously like you get to throw those things in and the adults get it. The kids won't, but the adults will. What is your favorite part of working on these Lego specials? You get to do it for these big franchises, but what would you say is the most fun part for you? You want to go first, David? <laughs> I mean, you go first. You can okay. go first. Uh, well, like, yeah. maybe like, let's just, so like, uh, like, do you mean like an actual like part that ends up on screen or kind it, of like, It could be any of that. I mean, like, hey, you get, you still get to work under the Star Wars name. That's really cool. So like, it could be anything. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, for me, like with uh, Terrifying Tales in specific, like the thing I'm happiest with, uh, and that felt like kind of the most me, um, was in researching, like once, you know, once I kind of, uh, once we got the green light on the project and David got me the script and I started to go back and watch old horror films and I watched Bram Stoker's Dracula and the lighting in that is extremely theatrical. Like it's almost more like a stage play than a, uh, I like that. I got super excited about that, bring, trying to bring that into the way we are because it fit with, you know, the, the whole thing. And so like using, getting to use color as a storytelling tool in a really theatrical way was kind of my favorite part. One of, well, not the only favorite part, but like was a really favorite thing and something I really dug into. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say creatively, the thing that I really dig and really enjoy is that the folks at Lucasfilm and Lego are, are A, enormously creative and B, push you to do your best so we are constantly looking for places to mine for humor and and for jokes and gags but also story and theme and heart so you are you are given a lot of leeway to play and you're also encouraged and and really pushed to do your best and to kind of keep finding those little things because it's i mean in a special like this and particularly in 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 lego star wars like it is it's finding both the big themes about, you know, fear and courage and courage in the face of fear, but also those little moments that you were referencing, the 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 little tiny shining moments and the homage to 80s horror films and, and all of that. And um, so it's just you are you are you're just encouraged to just keep pushing and finding that stuff and finding that stuff. And um you know, if you're really lucky in this business, you get to work with talented, creative people. And, and I mean, these are just incredibly talented, creative people. So it's just, it's just really fun. Uh, it's just at its most simplest, the, the core is just really fun. Yeah, no, I got to actually just, yeah, piggyback off of that. Like, I, I have to say, like, in my career, like, this is the best group of people I've ever gotten to work with. Like, it really is like a fantastic group and it is really collaborative. There's nobody, uh, flexing ego you know like it's just yeah it's a real joy to work with this team well thank you for your time i'm i'm sorry if i've gone overboard but i really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to answer these questions and um i had a lot of fun with this special so keep it up everybody has fun with it (laughs) and uh thank you